to the repulsive blackmailer Madame Filth. I didn't expect to be writing to you again, and I'm sure that this missive comes as a complete surprise to you as well. But something came across my desk recently, and I insisted I be the one to contact you about it. I wouldn't deny myself the pleasure of this message for a blood boon from a Justicar, for it is rare that one finds such clear examples of naturally occurring justice. Rather than hold you in suspense, let me get right to the point. Recently, a visitor arrived in Paris asking after you, a man named Edward Vect, and I naturally told him that you had left the domain of Prince Valon under a shadow of scandal, at which point he informed me that he was an Alistair seeking you for questioning. I'm not generally given to laughter, but Madame Filth, let me assure you, I laughed at that moment, which wasn't the best idea, as the Alistair was momentarily annoyed. But I quickly explained that I detested you with great passion, and that I couldn't be happier to hear you was searching for you. Naturally, I told him everything I knew, and I believe he's making his way to London tomorrow evening. You might ask yourself, if I hold you in such contempt, why am I warning you? Because by vile Nosferatu, I want you to run. I want you to scurry like a rat into some forgotten hole. If the Alistair came upon you as a surprise, you wouldn't be able to escape, and who knows? Maybe you'd worm your way out of whatever situation you found yourself in. But I suspect you are up to your fangs in all sorts of nasty business. And you also seem like someone who prioritizes their own safety, no matter what the cost. I don't think you would roll the dice when it comes to your immortality. And I don't want to roll the dice that he actually does just want to ask you some questions. So it's your move. Safety in flight, or risk in politics. As far as I'm concerned with a letter, I free London from your sleazy grip. I eagerly watch to see what you do next. But it occurs to me, since this is a matter of a civilized society and not the debased secrets of some victim of yours, you might not be as informed as one would assume. And so here is everything you could want to know about the Alistairs, but were afraid to ask Madame Filth. And this information is free. First, Alistairs are canine agents who work directly for the inner circle of the Camarilla. They have been charged with the unenviable task of hunting down the anathema, those dangerous kindred who have been added to the Camarilla's red list and targeted for destruction by the entirety of the sect. To understand the Alistairs at a basic level, one could describe them as the secret police force of the Camarilla. These elusive kindred move unseen and unnoticed through the sect, carrying out a variety of tasks at the command of the inner circle. That gangrel that wandered into Elysium? He could be an Alistair. So can the traveling Toridor artist, or the Nosferatu Snoop. Alistairs are often recruited from the ranks of Archons, and their anonymous existence can be a difficult one. But they are rewarded with a more or less universal immunity to prosecution from the local princes. This is because their duties often involve carrying out difficult and dirty work that keeps the Ivory Tower's power structure intact. When your knights are spent decorating the walls of a haven with the blood of a red-listed criminal, the last thing you need to worry about is the paperwork. The rogues that an Alistair hunts are among the worst canites in the world and include infernalists, major sabbat leaders, traitors, and even ancient horrors that would upend one's understanding of the world were they to encounter them. Now, as I've noted, these Alistairs have a wide latitude in bringing these red-listed criminals to justice, but they don't have a blank check. It's important to note that any kindred, even an Alistair, who commits diablerie upon an anathema without permission, will take the victim's place on the red list. 
I assume this prohibition is due to the extreme danger represented by the red listed. Even their souls are considered suspect and are consigned to oblivion. Most Alistairs prefer to work with other kindred, especially those who have experience in enforcement of traditions or in combat. Some prefer to work with other Alistairs, seeing the value of camaraderie. Others prefer to team up with Josian Archons, the elite Camarilla unit that focuses on infernalism and Gehenna heresies. Some other Alistairs prefer to work with Knights who have local knowledge, scourges or sheriffs. Not only are they plugged into their own communities to advise this Camarilla bounty hunter, but they're also very expendable. There are even some who opt to work with a mix of kindred, both those who hold a rank within the Camarilla and those who do not. Often these short-lived coteries focus on skill sets necessary to help the Alistair either find his target and bring them to justice, or when that target has special skills for evasion or combat. The members of an Alistair's coterie who do not hold a rank within the Camarilla are referred to auditors. Meanwhile, a more physically capable Knight who is called to assist an Alistair in exchange for a reward would be called a Bellator. Kindred don't always have a say in the matter whether they will serve in an Alistair's hunt, though most Kindred would think twice before telling these hunters no. If a non-Alistair somehow manages to destroy one of the Anathema, they will almost inevitably be forced into service as an Alistair. This is a difficult path to take, but it can also be rewarding in its way. The Canite bounty hunters answer only to Red Alistairs, and those kindred answer only to the inner circle, the beating hearts of the Camarilla. This means that they have a great deal of autonomy in their operations. Red Alistairs are a special breed of the Camarilla's secret police. These elite hunters are named based on their exceptional performance on their manhunts. Some claim that to be named a Red Alistair, one must have successfully destroyed one of the five most wanted anathema. Unlike other Alistairs, Red Alistairs hold supervisory positions, tasked with overseeing all Alistairs operating within a certain region. Although they coordinate hunts and review facts from afar, Red Alistairs are fully capable of tracking and engaging the anathema themselves. They prefer to remain in Camarilla-led cities instead of going out in the hunt or traveling for long periods, which I suppose is part of the privilege of rank. I wonder which one sent the Alistair coming for you, Madam Filth. I guess it would depend entirely on where you committed your crimes. As I mentioned before with Alistairs, the Red Alistairs operate beyond the jurisdiction of the Prince, placing greater emphasis on larger threats than dealing with the day-to-day -day functions of the Camarilla. In truth, this is partially why Alistairs spend a considerable amount of time building ties to other kindred, but it is not the only reason. What better way to ferret out moles, keep an eye on kindred who are acting suspicious, and connect with other high-ranking members of the Camarilla. They understand that sometimes the best way to protect the Camarilla is to work from within. A good Red Alistair is a spider, and her network of associations are a web whose vibrations she can feel halfway across the world. It's no surprise that one of the most famous Alistairs in existence currently sits as a Justicar of the Ventru clan. There is no better way for a secret police to enforce the orthodoxy of a sect. Similar to members of the Sabbat's Black Hand, Alistairs have a mystical tattoo on their right palm. This helps to establish their bona fides to senior Camarilla members. This tattoo called the Mark of the Trophy was created by the Tremere for the purpose of marking an Alistair with permanent authority within the sect. There is some stylistic variation, to be sure, 
but the mark generally assumes the form of a red arm. While the anonymous existence of the Alistairs can be challenging, it comes with rewards. As I mentioned earlier, there was the immunity prosecution from local princes. Moreover, the destruction of an anathema is rewarded by a prize known as the trophy, which varies depending on the clan that posted the anathema on the red list. This prize can be anything from a major boon from some of the most prominent members of the clan, the instruction on rare and powerful disciplines native to the clan, large feeding territories, precious secrets, artifacts, and even sanctioned diablery are all possible rewards. As you can imagine, all of this wealth is a powerful motivator for these shadowy figures. The Alistair who has come for you came from Budapest. So I can imagine that it must be very serious for them to travel such a distance in the middle of this war. Can you even entangle all of your sins, Madam Filth? Or your lies? When an Alistair is peeling the skin from your bones, will you be able to keep your story straight? None of your political connections will save you. This investigator is beyond Prince Anne or the Primogen of London. The network of victims you've weaved together as armor and weapons for yourself are nothing in the face of an Alistair's investigation. Good luck. I look forward to hearing about your annihilation. Or flight. Either is fine with me. Sheriff Alexander Yates. Clan Bruja. Paris. June. 1944.